it's something of a hobby of mine to listen to the religiously minded and non-religiously minded, the atheists and the theists and everything in between argue with one another. And I, of course, fall on the side of the non-religious or the atheist of that argument. But I've heard plenty of people on the side of the argument that I agree with using arguments that I consider horrible in their nature, they're poorly constructed, they're not very well thought out, or they're arguing something from an angle that I really disagree with. And I think it, it hurts their entire side of the argument far more than it helps because it's not logical, it's not thoughtful, it's, it's just unnuanced. Um, three of those things I've been hearing a lot lately, and I wanted to address these three primary things. And they're certainly not the only bad arguments that atheists make. They're certainly not the only poor decisions and rhetoric that atheists make or that non-believers, however you want to phrase it, are making. But these three just keep coming up. Um, I want to address all of them. So one of them, <laughs> this one's pretty simple. I've heard people argue that evolution isn't a theory, it's a fact. Okay, now, evolution is factual. Yes. Uh, it's not a guess. It's not a theory in the layman sense of the word. Uh, but in scientific terms, a theory means something very different. In scientific terms, a theory means what many people would consider to be factual by definition. The language of science is more humble and uh, a theory ex is the explanation that we have. It's the conclusion we come to based on many observed facts. So when the layperson hears, well, it's a theory, they're thinking, well, it's just a guess. It's, a, it's an estimation. It's what people think without having actually found evidence that puts it down uh, firmly. And if a non-believer, if someone, and by the way, arguing in favor of evolution doesn't make you an atheist, but uh, I hear a lot of passionate atheists arguing with uh, creationists and, and so forth, or just people who are skeptical about evolution. They, they have trouble accepting it. They don't want, they don't want to fall into that group. Um, well, it's not a theory. It's a fact. If you're doing that, if you're arguing that way, first of all, you're wrong because it is a theory. It's just not a theory in the sense that the layperson often refers to uh, a theory as. Secondly, <clears throat> When you do that, you are acknowledging to them that if they find evidence that supports evolution being a theory, then it would be what the layperson refers to it as. So when they go to research this, they, you said, no, evolution is a fact. It's not a theory because then you are uh, showing your own ignorance of, of what a theory means in scientific terms and you're supporting their misconception of the same thing. So you're telling them, well, if it were a theory, then it wouldn't necessarily be uh, found in evidence. It would just be a guess like what you're saying, but it's not, it's a fact. So when they go look up a credible scientific uh, publication and they find, oh, this says the theory of evolution, this says evolution is a theory. Well, then you have reinforced that that means it's just a guess instead of taking the time to understand and educate them as to what the meaning of theory means. Um, recently, again, this one keeps coming up. The studies show that more educated people are less religious. This is not an argument. Um, and whenever something starts with studies show, your skepticism should start flashing. Um, Studies, surveys, things of this nature are not hardline evidence. They're studies, they're surveys, they're observations, trends, this sort of thing. Um, it's, a, it's a starting point to observe something. And all this is, is a starting point to observe a correlation. And correlation does not equate causation. If you're saying that it automatically does, you're guilty of a post hoc fallacy. So maybe it is the case. Let's, let's give the benefit to the person making this argument that um, there are more educated people, uh, the, the more educated people are less religious. So what? So what if that is the case? It doesn't mean that religion is stupid because of that fact alone. It doesn't mean that being non-religious 
just makes you more educated. Uh, there are highly intelligent people, people much smarter than, than I am, who are religious. And there are highly unintelligent people who are non-religious. They are people who make arguments like this, or at least in that sense, they are being unintelligent. So uh, it's nothing more than uh, an observation of correlation, even if it is the case, even if the studies are 100% accurate and there is an inverse trend between religiousness and education. And, and another thing to consider there is, is how are you measuring education. Being educated doesn't necessarily make you intelligent. It means that you have a degree. It means that you have a master's, a doctor's, things like this. Um, having an education, um, even a, a GED, a diploma, having an education doesn't automatically make you intelligent uh, holistically. Maybe you are really well versed in one area. It doesn't mean that you are smarter than anyone who doesn't have that piece of paper or couldn't afford to go to that college or chose a, a different life path that didn't involve being formally educated. Uh, so intelligence and education are not the same thing. And to try to take an observation that more educated people tend to be less religious and spin that as being that religion is therefore the stupid choice is unwise and it's fallacious. Uh, this really, this last one really gets on my nerves, um, gets under my skin. The argument that religion is a mental illness. I shouldn't have to make this point. I shouldn't have to argue this. Sarah Han recently made a video and, and pointed out that, that that used to be like a joke. You used to throw that at somebody who was being hyperbolic and you would like jokingly throw it back at them. Um, oh, well, then you're mentally ill if you think that, uh, you know, because you have some relationship with an imaginary person. Uh, but it's not a real argument. It's not, and, and it's not even a really great joke of an argument for a number of reasons. Uh, the primary defense that I see for people trying to insist that religion is a mental illness is that, oh, well, they have a delusion that they have a relationship with somebody that doesn't exist. And, and if that were to happen in any other context, then we consider them crazy. Well, we have to consider the other parts that come with that. We have to give full context to that. Um, they aren't just out of the blue believing they have a relationship with somebody that, that, that they're talking to. Most people who are religious have been indoctrinated probably since birth, if, uh, if not you know, later in life. Um, they've been indoctrinated for a long time to believe that this God exists. Uh, for the longest time, I didn't think that not believing in a God was even an option. Uh, it, it just everybody knew it. it. It was taken for granted as something that everybody knew. It's it's academic. It's basic. You know, grass is green, sky is blue. God exists. Um, they've been raised under that condition, and they've been raised to believe that if you close your eyes and think about it, clasp your hands in prayers, and say something, you can communicate with this person, and you will have a relationship with this God that exists. And they're raised to believe this. They have internal conversations with themselves and feel that because that's how what they were raised to do, they're having conversations with a, a deity. Um, if somebody does that, if the indoctrination is taking place, if it's reinforced by uh, the vast majority of the culture and all of the adults and peers and siblings uh, that this person encounters in their lives, no, they're not mentally ill because they believe it. They were raised and conditioned to believe it. Being conditioned uh, a certain way does not make you mentally ill. Uh, Pavlov's dogs were not mentally ill because when they heard a bell, they believed that food was going to come to them. It was classical conditioning and indoctrination does not make you mentally ill. Um, people attempt to argue that, uh, well, if, if somebody were going to have a conversation with leprechauns, you'd call them crazy. Well, if they were indoctrinated and raised to believe that, uh, that leprechauns were real, they were just intangible, and all you had to do was speak to them and they could hear you, and every part of the, uh, the culture reinforced that, and all the adults around them reinforced that, no, I wouldn't consider them crazy. I would take sympathy for that confusion. Uh, I would not agree with them, uh, not 
calling them mentally ill doesn't mean that you would think that it's a smart decision or that it's a correct decision. It just acknowledges that they aren't suffering from a mental illness because they believe something that isn't true. Um, someone who believes in conspiracy theories is not mentally ill just because they believe in something foolish, just because they believe in something that does not, uh, that you do not find reasonable. It's just a difference in opinion. So uh, the other thing to, to consider, uh, placebo effect is something that has a surprising amount of actual results. The placebo effect being that uh, if you are ill and you are told that this medicine is going to help you, for example, and it's really just a sugar pill, but you're under the full belief that this medicine is going to cure your illness, uh, and you take this sugar pill, but under the impression it's a uh, real medicine, um, many people will show signs of improvement because they believe the medicine did something for them. Michael Jordan's special stuff in the movie Space Jam. Uh, there's a placebo effect, okay? This happens. This is part of human psyche, which is a, a remarkably powerful element in who we are. You can trick yourself into performing differently. Athletes psych themselves up to perform. Um, musicians prepare themselves mentally for a performance. And if you psych yourself up, you can get in your own head and you can uh, behave in ways that are different than what you normally would if you were to calmly, rationally, logically think things out. Um, or if you were to really critically examine every part of something that's happening versus allowing yourself to be emotionally or psychologically swayed, then it would be different. So that is just human nature. It's part of the human psyche. And believing in God in many ways is a confirmation bias supported placebo effect. Uh, people believe that this God is real, that they can talk to it, they can interact with this God. They do so regularly. And because they do so, that they believe it, uh, they have this placebo effect that reinforces that, yeah, uh, I pray that I would be healthier and I feel healthier now. I really believed in that. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to believe in God to have such placebo effects. Uh, Non-religious people can psych themselves up and they can have hope or they can have faith in things other than a God. And that can give them a physical reaction. It can give them uh, emotional encouragement and support and that sort of thing. That does not make you mentally ill. Being affected by a placebo effect does not make you mentally ill. Believing in something that most would consider irrational or not supported by sufficient evidence does not make you mentally ill. Okay, now to wrap that concept up, that does not mean there are no mentally ill religious people. Some people uh, happen to be religious and are mentally ill, and they uh, exhibit that mental illness through their religion at times. Yes, there are people who have killed their children and justified it by believing that God was talking to them, that voices in their head uh, were God, or that, hey, this is my religious belief, and I'm willing to kill my child or let my child die because I believe my God says so. And obviously, I find that appalling and I find it horrible. But they aren't, the religion isn't the only thing that exacerbates a mental illness under certain circumstances. Uh, it's, it's far from the only thing. There are sports fanatics who will kill people over which team has won or lost a game. They will riot over that. They'll get worked into a rioting frenzy over which team wins or loses certain sporting competitions. Um, there are sports fans who irrationally believe that the way that they dress while they're watching their teams compete literally has an effect on how that team performs. We do not consider these people mentally ill because they aren't. They are superstitious. They are maybe gullible. They are victim of the herd mentality, uh, but it doesn't mean that they're mentally ill. It just means that maybe the, uh, I mean, maybe it means that they got worked up. They were, were driven to a point. And those who are mentally ill can be pushed over the edge by those other factors that I just mentioned. So 
Uh, being a sports fan doesn't make you mentally ill. Um, if you are mentally ill and the sport is what happens to push you over the edge, it doesn't mean that we should chastise all sports and all sports fans. Uh, and this can be applied to a number of things. People have obsessions over all sorts of things that aren't just religious. And being obsessed is the problem in that case, or being uh, obsessive compulsive, uh, all, all these sort of things that are emotional or mental issues that are uh, manifest through a certain factor does not make that factor the cause of the mental illness. So religion is certainly under that umbrella of things that uh, we hear about it, and it's easy for a non-believer to say, oh, well, religious people are mentally ill because look at this guy. He believed God uh, wanted him to kill his daughter, and he did. Let's not paint with that wide of a brush. Uh, and when you're trying to use these arguments against the religion itself, you are doing far more harm than good to your argument. You're removing the nuance from the argument you are neglecting real arguments for your position that are founded in logical concepts, and you are giving people on the other side of the argument ammunition to throw back at you. So those are three that really get to me. If there are some bad arguments on either side that you wish to share, feel free to put a uh, comment below or post a video response, and hopefully we can weed out some of these bad arguments from both sides of the table.